just refreshing the, the facts of the actual carbon footprint of architecture and wearing my sort of political hat or whatever that is, we're next. The built environment is next. It started with fossil fuels, then heavy industries, now it's agriculture. We're next. It's just a matter of who, who the sitter is. The eye of water is turning and it's looking at people that are working in the built environment. So it's going to hit us. And from a business perspective, you better buckle up. Right? So, so, and a political perspective as well. Um, this will be high politics within three to five years. And, and, and then you, there is, you're on the, wall, the right side of the, the wrong side of this equation. Um, I think we've gotten far. I think many of the solutions we've heard. I think we have a lot of innovation, a lot of technology that, that can help. And, and you know, a lot of this is, is on capital owners. We need capital to flow towards sustainable cities and sustainable materials and sustainable solutions across the value chain. And it's coming. So that's the E. And the S, I think, is the next. You know, how do you combine that with livability and, and creating cities that people actually want to live in that does not sort of exclude people? Uh, that's coming. That's, that will be the next level and how do you integrate that? And then I think the G is, is kind of. Um, that we all need to bend towards each other. We need to be stronger on lining across the value chain. If you need to get to scale, you need politicians to agree with, you know, evil private equity Jews to agree with, you know, citizens groups. You need to find that equilibrium where you can actually get stuff done. And so, I'm not saying that we should we should create a, a roadmap or a governance structure around this, but I think it's more sort of a moral imperative for everyone to bend towards each other.